Welcome back, everybody, to the XBA. We got week two, part number two, here for you guys tonight. And we're kicking it off with Alaska and Wisconsin. Early on in this game, Omar Jaconde is making his presence felt down low. I mean, my God, this guy is so big. And he was doing this stuff down in XBA, too, really working on his craft. And he's really making it translate here at the XBA levels. Let's jump a little bit further ahead here. 19 to 18, Chris Boucher teaming up with Terry Rozier getting the alley-oop. Now, this is a big-time block by Jonathan Isaac. Wow. And then all the way out to Onowaku, who fires up the three. The rookie hits the three ball. A one-point game. Here is Gilgis Alexander with the nice lay-in, the little pretty lay-in there. Schroeder firing in a two. And we are going to go into the half with Alaska up by 11, 49 to 38. Guys, I should mention, though, we do have a link available for you guys if you want to Keep up with your picks and see how those picks are doing as we see another Omar Jaconde block for Alaska. Giannis gets the two, the green, and the one. And Alaska is just going crazy on Wisconsin right now on the road. Here's a rebound. Lonzo missed the shot. And Giannis to Schroeder gets the two to go. He actually took a little bit of contact but still was able to get the shot to go. Chris Boucher gets the foul on Jonathan Isaac and is going to hit the two anyway. Actually hit the two on the free throw attempts and this big time dunk by Giannis. That's going to do it. That was the dagger for Alaska. Good win for the chill over the Wisconsin Cheddar. <clears throat> the Bandits. They were supposed to be called the Cheddar. A little, little XBA trivia there for you guys. But Jalen Brown was awesome. 24 points. Boucher had a double-double, but unfortunately just wasn't enough against year one XBA champions. Guys, uh, building off the point I was trying to make earlier, if you guys want to follow along with how your picks are doing, the link for that is actually below and in the live chat. I've been linking it a couple times here in the chat so you guys can follow along with how your picks are doing. I've already included part one, so you don't have to worry about that. But part two, we've obviously got games still left to play and decide on. So uh, follow along. Your point totals will be updated after every so many games. That way I'm not doing it after every single uh, matchup. But you guys can follow along with your picks. If they've been highlighted green, that means you've got the pick correct. And your point totals will be updated a little bit later on. So... All right, let's take a look at this matchup. We got St. Louis and SoCal. St. Louis is actually playing really, really well despite losing Donovan Mitchell, guys. We have absolutely shifted our team identity, but we are 9-2 on the season. SoCal is actually playing really well as well. As we see, this three-ball shot by Jared Culver is going to hit it. It's 9-4 to four right now. And then Mo Bamba getting the two and the one. And we are coming back here just a little bit. But Mo Bamba going to go to the line and hit the free throw. So it is now 9-7. to seven. Let's jump forward. We got Buddy Mayer Jr., our draft pick from year number two. He's going to make this shot look easy. It's a three ball to go, and it's a pretty close game. Phoenix Wah hits a two as well. Bamba with the good defense, got a hand in the face, but John Collins is going to hit the two. And then we got Marcus Bryant, the center prospect from year number one, hitting a three as well. Then we got Lewandowskis. Our European prospect, or he's like a 10-year pro, but he's coming on over with the Roscoe Todorovic class. And, uh, yeah, so we were lucky enough to go get him. And we are currently up by six on SoCal. So this team is actually playing really well, guys. I'm really impressed with how the arrows are doing. It must be the new court design. What do you guys think about the new court design? Do you guys like the apron? We actually uh, didn't have an apron, believe it or not. No, 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 we did. We did. We just haven't, didn't have any, like, coloring or something we didn't have any like uh, lettering I think it was I don't even remember guys to be honest with you no we had the old school court anyway regardless either way we got Hernan Gomez getting the offensive rebound and then down low we can't I mean we got to stop this guy we got to stop Marcus Bryant otherwise we might be in for a really 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 rude awakening here going nine and three that shot good by EJ Sanders, our year one prospect we drafted. Here's Phoenix Wah off the screen on the floppy play, coming around, hitting the three ball good, and St. Louis will win this game. Guys, we do not score a ton of points. We haven't scored a lot of points, even with Donovan Mitchell in the mix, but we do play really good team basketball and good defense. Our defense is one of the best in the XBA. It might be the best as far as points scored against us goes, 
And we held SoCal to 72 points in gameplay. When's the last time you ever see that happen, right? So jumping over here to Miami and El Paso, I I actually didn't... I, <laughs> I made a mistake, guys. I didn't get this game recorded. I, I made sure that you guys knew about that in a community post, so I apologize. I also missed out on this game as well, Columbus and BC Chicago. But BC Chicago will take care of business over Columbus. If you guys are try trying to follow along with your pickums, these both these games will not count in your pickums. So I'm going to leave those blank. Even if I gave you scores, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, it, zero or one everybody's gonna get it right so i mean it doesn't matter i guess it does matter in the grand scheme of things if you got the wrong if you got the team you picked it was wrong then you kind of got saved a little bit the fact that it's not that they don't count like some guys might have gone oh and two right and it wouldn't count all right so take a look at this matchup here we've got denver and san diego and you might have noticed a little aesthetic change here for denver we got summit basketball on the apron in the background there so to the top that's the new saying for denver to the top of the mountain and uh they're just trying to get to the top and i think drafting Mondre rhymes porter was definitely a uh, big time get plus sal boss they've been a pretty darn good team so far in this xba year number four but so far san diego is currently up on them 51 to 48 here is jalen lequeux with the three ball to tie the matchup up as we go into halftime, they're hitting 52%, 22 rebounds, 13 steals. Very, very even all the way across the board. And then take a look at this. Ben Simmons fires up a three. But look at Mondre Rhymes Porter, dude. What? He got a tip in from that distance. That's crazy. Plus, he gets physical. He's all pumped up. He loves it. He's really fitting in with this offense and with this team, man. He's just been a great player, a great get for Denver. All right, let's take a look at the scoreboard here. 89 to 87, but Denver will actually extend their lead out. But Russell Westbrook hits a three to get him back into the game. And then Ben Simmons misses this shot. San Diego has another chance here. Here is San Diego driving. Can they get a shot off? That's the question. We got 13 seconds left. Basley trying to find his man. We got Blake Hudson. What's Blake got? He's working on Sal Boss. Five seconds to go. Blake Hudson with the athletic move. Sal Boss gets the foul. And Blake Hudson will go to the line. So all this grinding from Blake Hudson coming off the bench. Not getting a lot of time. He's finally getting some time. He ties the game up. But we got Denver missing their own shots here. Now look at this. Get to the line. You got fourth quarter. Westbrook fires up the three. He's going to miss. And we will go to overtime in denver wow that was a that was a crazy little last couple of sequences there for both teams i don't know about that basley should have been driving to try to get an inside shot an easier shot maybe that would have won him the game but either way we are in overtime now blake hudson almost stripped laurie market in there but to no avail and then we got this pass i don't know what the heck that was I'm trying to fit it in to a tight window, tight needle, and then look at Russell Westbrook getting the foul. And he's going to go to the line. Team is down by one. He ends up tying it here with this free throw. Could take the lead here with 41.3 seconds left. He's going to miss. So go freaking figure. Free throws are like the hardest thing to do in the XBA, apparently. Tie ball game, 35 seconds, and then Simmons gets the bucket off the backboard. 104 to 102, and then Blake Hudson, wow, with the little flip. And he's all pumped up. We got Markinen off the backboard and in. It's another two-point game. Three seconds to go. Hudson fires it up for the win. Missed shot. Uh, Blake Hudson misses the shot, but he gave it a good attempt there. That's all you can ask for. He didn't have any time to go driving in. So he just took the next best shot. And, you know, unfortunately, it didn't go in for San Diego. But Sal Boss led the way in points for the Summit. Cyclones had a good output, but... There you go. So that's your end result. Guys, let's take a look at this matchup here. This is kind of a makeup game. We got BC Chicago and Miami. So obviously BC Chicago was supposed to play Columbus. I missed that game. And then you had Miami and El Paso, and I missed that game. So we're trying to show everybody in this gameplay and in this highlight reel. So this is the next matchup with both teams we haven't shown yet. So Miami, Chicago, here you are. Donovan Mitchell making some nice plays, making some nice moves. Look at this, D Mitch going on in spider he's so tough he's so tough i, I kind of miss him a little bit but hey guys we're 10 and 2 
the arrows are 10 and 2 right now. I, I can't be complaining too much. And Miami's actually playing a little bit better basketball too, even though they're six and six. They're actually doing a little bit better as far as offense goes. They're not like getting blown out by teams. They actually stand a chance. They're actually beating a BC Chicago team 52 to 46. Right now, look at this kick out pass from Ardem Kozlov to I, oh, I didn't see who that was. Shoot. My bad guys. But either way, a three ball to go. Miami, 55 to 47. 55-47. They're, do, they're, doing, they're doing awesome, man. They're doing great. Gotta love it. Look at D-Mitch here again. Spida going in, driving, getting the two. Easy two. That has been probably the biggest get for them was Donovan Mitchell, in my opinion. Really vaulting this offense to the next level. They're able to kind of kind of drive and spread the floor a little bit easier. I mean, I know Phoenix Watt just didn't get a lot of playing time. Maybe he should have. Maybe they didn't have to make the trade uh, to go get Donovan Mitchell. But either way... It's been a great move for Miami. That offense has been taking it to the next level. Still a close game here. Wayne Cartwright getting the two off Artem Kozlov on defense. Now, Mitchell with the step back move. That's a nice move on Encolo. He gets the two. 99-96, a three-point game. Three ball up, no good, but Tony Bradley going to get the two to fall. Here comes Wayne Cartwright working on Jason Tatum, and he gets the two and the foul. Cartwright is one special player, man. He's a very, very special player. Can make all the athletic moves, but he gets the foul. He gets some points up on the board. Now, we got Encolo to the line here. 103-101. Cartwright hangs in, ties the game up. Yeah, he ties the game. Four seconds left. Mitchell fires it up from way downtown. He got it to land. Miami wins the game. <laughs> And Donovan Mitchell, yeah, look at Cartwright. Oh, man, you've got to feel for Cartwright and BC Chicago, right? They can't believe it. Cartwright played well down the stretch in that game, but Mitchell just steps up and says, I'm taking to this new role, man. I'm taking it to this new role. This guy's a superstar. You, you, you expect it. 32 points for Mitchell, 28 for Tatum. I mean, between those two guys, I mean, they've been actually playing a little. They've been playing better together. Tatum and Mitchell, then Lillard and Kawhi Leonard. I almost said Argata, but Lillard and Leonard have actually been playing worse, in my opinion, compared to Tatum and Mitchell. It's kind of saying something a little bit, right? Both young guys, Tatum and Mitchell, that could easily take the XBA by storm eventually. You know, Lillard and Kawhi a little bit on the older side. I, I want to use the term lightly, old. I want to use it lightly, but you guys kind of get what I'm getting at here. All right, let's take a look at the New York City Slickers. We saw them in part number one, but because I missed El Paso and Miami, we, we need to show El Paso, and this was the next best matchup. But look at Malik Jones. Malik Jones do, just doing the back and forth, the spin moves and the, the shoulder fakes, and he, he drew the foul and then got the one off of the fadeaway jump shot. Like, this is, I mean... Malik Jones having an MVP caliber season. And then Marcus Anthony firing up a three as well. He's been a nice little, um, dare I say it, 1A type of player. He's been playing really well offensively. Defensively, he still leaves a little bit left to be desired, right? We, we've been scouting Marcus Anthony on that for quite some time. But with, between them, LaMelo Ball, I mean, this offense is moving. This offense is clicking right now. Here's Ball for three, and he's going to get it as well. It's 46-44. Three ball shot, no good from half court. And we have a City Slicker lead by two. By two, 46-44. Both teams shooting lights out, 47 to 46 percent. Let's jump a little bit ahead here. We got Malik Jones still firing it up, still feeling good, hitting greens all over. We got James Harden with the sweet, sweet lefty shot, gonna hit that. Malik Jones missed shot. Hey, 95-91, two minutes and 35 seconds, and we've got passing back. Look at the passing. Look at the beautiful passing down here. DeAndre Ayton makes the two to pull it in within two. We got oh, what a move by Marcus Anthony. Getting the foul and the one. And then look at this. Mm. I'm speechless. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm speechless. James Harden tried to throw it back in off an attempted steal. It gets picked off. It goes the other way. It gets two points. I mean, wh what do you do? What, what do you do? This is just kind of how the season's going for, for El Paso, apparently. No, I think they're like either at 500 or a little bit above 500. Yeah, they're just, um, 
if you guys watch the Team Builder series, they're kind of like McAllen's. They're kind of like McAllen. They're a good team, but they just screw up all the time. And I, I feel like that's what's going on with El Paso. We see that coming coming out here against New York. 107, 101. Marcus gets to the line here, 13 and a half seconds. And then this game is over. It's a seven point win for the New York City Slickers. So they come back in week two. They lost it against Honolulu. They get a road victory here over El Paso. We had Harden with 23, Moutier with 21, and nine minutes. He had 21 points in nine minutes. He was just shooting lights out. But Marcus Anthony actually led the way. 25 points. Ball had 23. Malik had 14 points. So it just goes to show you that top three between those between those three those three guards, they're playing really, really well. I would still classify Malik Jones as a guard. Now he's got they've moved him to small forward, but uh, between him. Lamelo and Marcus, you got three guards on the court. These guys are just playing lights out, man. All right, let's move on to Carolina and Seattle. This is a matchup I don't think we've ever seen in the XBA. This is uh, this is uh, two teams that have been playing decent. We got LeBron James and Chris Stapps Porzingis, and right now no team can score. It's been a defensive slugfest right now. LeBron James, he's gonna miss a shot again. You got James Tashi passing the ball out to Leo Guerrero. Let's see what Guerrero's got. Fires up a three, he's gonna miss, and Embassy with the rebound. Finally, we, we got some anger and some putback jams in here going on. My goodness. Both teams playing, again, big man ball. They got a lot of big men out here on the courts. That's why we're playing so well on defense, right? You get DJ Hilliard from Michigan State, I should say. <laughs> He's a teammate with former teammate with Leo Guerrero. But look at DeAndre Jones. No, that's Brian Ubre. Sorry, two Georgetown products. DeAndre Jones also went to Georgetown. We got Brian Ubre getting the two. Now look at this pass to DeAndre Jordan with that dunk. We got LeBron driving in. Prince Jr. giving him the high fives, giving him the love. The shot going to miss. Chris Stapps is going to miss this shot. So 35-46, 11-point lead for the Martians. Martians have actually they've been playing well in gameplay. This is crazy to me. This is crazy to me as we see Ubre hitting the three-point shot. 69-56. I mean, I guess Carolina has never really done much in gameplay. They've never done really much in gameplay. But Seattle... They don't really have a real good lineup. They don't have a really good lineup. And for whatever reason, I mean, they've been playing pretty well. Week one, they played well. I think week one, they got a win. Week one, they got a win. So now in four, fourth quarter here, we got a six-point lead. Here's a free ball. No good. Are they going to let this thing slip away? That's going to be the question here as we see LeBron James working on Jackson Hayes. is going to miss a shot and a seven-point win for Seattle. In the matchup of C car. Yeah, there's. I, I, I'm, I'm just weird like that. I'm sorry. I just see weird, weird things like that. LeBron James, 22 points. Cole Anthony, 16. DeAndre Jordan, 15. Got a double double. James Tashi, 20 point, 21 points in 20 minutes. That's a very, very solid out outing. A good production there for the young guard. The most improved. He was actually voted most improved in year number three as a guard. So, gotta love it. Maybe year two, I should say. He's a year one prospect. Yeah, he's a year one prospect. Man, we're, we're starting to get so many custom prospects in this thing. It's hard to remember, like, what, what year was he? What year was he? But either way, Seattle's been playing well in gameplay, which is really surprising to me. And uh, we're gonna move on. So Jacksonville and Philadelphia. We saw Philadelphia, you know, play decently, got a win over Washington. Of course, Washington losing in part one of week two. We saw that game against Boston. Jairus Pogdekon going to hit it too, and I love that expressive personality that Jairus has. I love it. 44-36, to 36, Jacksonville here with the lead. I haven't seen many Steph Curry highlights so far, but maybe we'll see a few here in the second half. He's actually got the lead in points, 13 points, 44-38, six-point game. Jacksonville is a team that I feel like is missing a little something, right? I feel like they're just missing that X factor. Like, of course, Steph Curry is going to get your points. He's going to be a big-time player. But, you know, it's this first lead tonight for the Bruisers, 67-66 now. We got a big-time dunk. Maybe they just don't have a big-man presence down there. I don't know what's going on. You know, Nurkic is no, is no slouch, but 
Man, oh man, we got Steph Curry missing shots here late. 93-85, an eight-point game. We got Fox hitting the two. I don't know. They're just missing something from that year one championship team, Eastern Conference championship team, I should say. And uh, they just really, they haven't been the same. You know, they've been losing some of their playoff series. Steph Curry missing a shot here. It's 97-85. And you know what? Philly's a tough team, you know, so maybe I better temper my expectations here for Jacksonville. Just Philly's a kind of a tougher team now as you see Tommy Diamantakos, the sleek Greek, is going to hit a two. And then we got De'Aaron Fox with the steal on Steph Curry. And 99.85, that is going to pretty much seal it. We got Miles Turner off the backboard, no good. And then look at this, just no will, no fight, no hustle. Derek Favors with the missed shot, finally puts it back in, gets pissed off, says, just let's end this thing, right? Let's just end this thing, put Jacksonville out of their misery. 101.87, I feel like the jumper missing something. They're just not the same, man. And I, I feel like you guys can see it out here on the court. I don't know what it is. Maybe they just need more production out of some of their younger guys like Wingate. Only had six points. You got Forbes who also had 20 plus, but I don't know, man. Some questionables, questionable things out in Jacksonville. Hey, take a look at the Western Conference. St. Louis is 12 and six. Yeah, baby. Just kidding. Um, yeah, we're 12 and six, but we're talking about Phoenix here in this matchup. We got San Diego actually right behind us. In St. Louis at 11 and 6, I think. 11 and 5, 11 and 6. They're still having a good season. But let's talk about Phoenix and Columbus. Phoenix is currently 5 and 7 on the year. Yeah, they're having a little bit of a championship hangover. I would have expected them to, at least in 12 games, been at least like 8 and 4, right? I mean, they're still a really good team, very talented across the board. Columbus actually has played more games than Phoenix, but they're currently 9 and 7. So they have just as many losses. As Phoenix, just a little bit more wins, right? They have four more wins at nine and seven. So maybe that's maybe that's going to bode well for Phoenix. They're, they've got more rest, right? So they're going to be playing this team tough. They're going to be playing Columbus very tough. But so far, very close matchup. And really, what I'm going to ask in this in this video here is Phoenix suffering from the XBA Championship hangover. We've seen it with Alaska. We've seen it with Kentucky in year two. Year three, Phoenix wins the whole thing. Are we get, are we seeing that in year four? Right now, it's very close, very tough. Eastern Conference team in Columbus. They've actually taken the lead here, 84 to 78. Moving on, 98-92. This should have been, in my opinion, the XBA championship. I don't know about you guys, but that would have been my pick. I would have loved to see it. Phoenix and Columbus, you would have loved to see it. 192, and then we got Tyler Hero getting the dunk. 101 to 94 off the steal. And then look at this, Devin Booker with the big time dunk here. He's got 36 points tonight. And really, I think Booker is saying, you know what, we're better than that five and seven record. And I think it's because they've gotten a lot of rest. They just haven't played as many games as the rest of the XBA. So 103.90. Five, we got this three ball going to miss, and then Jello with the rebound, and Phoenix takes care of business here. Of course, we don't know how this matchup would have happened in the XBA Finals, but I would have loved to see it. <laughs> would have loved to see it. 30 plus points for Zion, and then 30 plus points for Devin Booker, so they went back and forth, but you know, pretty close game, all things considered. Very close game. I would have loved to see that in the finals. Even though we did get a good one, I can't I can't talk too much crap about what we had in year three with Pittsburgh, but very good, very good matchup here between Columbus and Phoenix. All right, let's take a look at the injury report. We got Precious Achiwa and Obi Toppin. They are going to be out for the rest of the season for Detroit and California. So that kind of sucks for those two teams, but it is what it is, man. Injuries happen, right? You got to roll with the punches. You got to deal with it. You got to find a way to maybe call some XBA2 guys up, which leads me into my next point. I think that by now, with all these entries you see up on the screen, you guys need some XBA2 updates, man. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually give you that by Wednesday or Thursday of this week. And by the way, guys, happy Easter. We're posting this on Sunday night. Happy Easter. I didn't even mention that to open up our video tonight. <laughs> My bad. But you know what? Um, I think that's going to be good for you guys because we're all the way through the month of November at this point. 
inside this XBA uh, year four. We're done with November. And I'll give you guys a standings update as well to see to, for you guys to see where everybody's at. But um, so for this update for XBA two, we'll we'll also get through the month of November and December. By the way, we'll get through the month of December, and we'll give you guys an update on who's who's doing well, who's doing what, and who might be earning the call up to the pro level. Because as we see the standings here, Montreal is playing really well, thirteen and six. They're doing really they're doing really well at the end of the month of November. We got Wisconsin 11-7. We got Philadelphia actually doing better record-wise in, in uh, winning percentage than New York at 11 and 10. You love to see it. You love to see it. So they get rid of Malik Jones and they're actually playing a little bit better basketball. How how do you figure that? Right? Miami at 9 and 9. They're playing decently, man. They're scoring a lot of points with D Mitch and Jason Tatum. Offense is really taking it to the next step. You got an eight, a six and eleven. My bad, six and eleven team here with Tampa Bay, and then Detroit being the worst team in the Eastern Conference, along with Boston, who is actually going to be my dark horse team. They're not doing much. They're not doing much at least at the end of November. St. Louis and San Diego tied for first place in the Western Conference at twelve and six. You got Denver up there, eleven and seven. L.A. eleven and seven, ten and six, ten and. Six. 10 and 8, I should say, for the Kansas City Stampede. The Chill, the Martians are actually playing well, too. They're two games back from first place here, ending November. So pretty tight Western Conference so far. Uh, New Orleans hanging in there at 7 and 9. They're actually doing a little bit better than the Phoenix Monsters. 7 and 10, Peppers. 6 and 10, Cyborgs. I'm anxious to see who's in last place. I think I know who it is. It's not California. They're 7 and 12. That's a real big surprise. Really big surprise. 7 and 12 on the season. CJ Thomas, Malachi Hendricks, those guys have been taking to Twitter, talking about being hyped for their team, hoping for 72 and 0. Obviously, I know that that wasn't ever going to happen, but they were hyped about this season, and it's not going too well. It is not going too well. They're 7 and 12 at the end of November. Taking a look at some of the statistical leaders right now, the stats leaders, we got, look at Sanchez, 10 assists per game. This guy, point guard, is really moving that offense. Yeah, out, out in Nashville, we got Tyler Walsh with seven assists per game as a rookie. you love to see that. Let's move out here to see the top offenses in the XBA. We got New York, Miami, Montreal was up there, New Orleans was up there, go figure that with uh, Kawhi and Dame. Worst offenses, Founders, Arrows, Power. Somehow the, the Arrows and the Founders are winning games. I just, I don't know how that, it's just because of our defense. It really is because of our defense. But you know what? Despite scoring a bunch of points in Miami, they're giving up a lot of points still. They're top three in points against. But look at the Founders defense. This is why. They're not scoring a lot of points, but they are playing really, really good defense. There's allowing 92 and a half points per game. That's that's pretty dang solid. But their differential is in the negatives. So kind of concerning there, but um, they're still playing well. Still playing well and winning games. Now here's a key indicator now for like power rankings. Look at the, look at the top five teams there. I mean, you had Montreal, you had San Diego. I mean, these teams are playing really, really well, guys. And as we simulate all the way in December, we're done with December. We're now heading into January. So the next time that you get an XBA vintage, we're going to be in January. Look who's at the top. Washington, 17 and 10, 18 and 12 Montreal. Philly is now actually a game ahead of, a half a game ahead of New York. <laughs> Some Leak Jones leaves and they play just better basketball. Miami's still hanging in there though. I mean, they've still got a shot. They're five games back from first place. So outside of the playoff mix by just a couple games, Detroit and Boston, the two worst teams here in the Eastern Conference, they got to figure some things out there. They're just young. I mean, you figured that was going to happen, but uh, you know, and then losing Obi Toppin really hurt them too. But Denver, my surprise team in, in the West, Denver, 1911, Honolulu is in first place. El Paso, KC, LA, St. Louis is still hanging in despite simulating an entire month. Our team is still hanging in there. Phoenix at 12 and 15. California 14 and 18. So they've won some games to try to crawl all the way back. And uh, they've been they've been doing well as well. Uh, Vancouver, last place in the Western Conference. You kind of figured that was gonna happen, but you know, there's they're just trying to figure some things out there. But look at the rookie report. We got Mondra Rhymes Porter, 
Up top in the top four, CJ Thomas, top three, but Blackman and Mason Hendricks leading the way as far as points per game goes. Tyler Walsh in the top five. That was a that was the steal of the draft. Top five in points per game for rookies for the Washington Founders. Now imagine if CJ Thomas had gone there. Washington's in first place, California in the lower quartile. <laughs> the lower quarter of the of the uh Eastern Conference teams, or Western Conference teams, I should say. So I, I don't know. I'm just saying, just saying, losing culture, maybe not, maybe not. Let's keep going. Let's. We've got Andrew Pierre down here, top 25. He's in the 24th spot. We got Quickly there at 25. We got Jaquel Hyde at 26. Bordone at 27. Onuwaku hanging in at, at uh, about 6.1. Jabari Jackson. Schooner, Asher Payne, one of the more, one of the more um, maybe the, the steals of the draft there would be Asher Payne. He's actually not doing too bad across the board. You know, get, getting a few minutes here or there, but just being very productive. DJ Hard, DJ Hilliard, Von Prado is technically a rookie because he played down in XBA2, even though he was a year, uh, a year two draft pick. Oba Olawale actually rounds out the list here. But look at the rebounds. Eklund, Rhymes, Porter, Frazier, Dunstan, and Giffey. So we know we know why the Kansas Jayhawks were good in the XCAA, right? Giffey, Eklund, MRP. Yeah, you can figure that out. You can do the math there. But Andrew Pierre, a top six player as far as rebounds go. And then assists per game, Tyler Walsh, CJ Thomas, Blackman, Boss. It's kind of surprising that Sal Boss is up there with assists. But uh, you know what? He's He's been playing well out there in Denver. So, guys, that is going to be it for tonight's XBA action. Again, happy Easter to you and your family. Hope you guys had a good one. And as I mentioned before, we will give you guys an update from XBA 2 all the way from the beginning of the season to the end of December. And then we will give you guys an update on who they called up, who they might have been able to send down with all the injuries, and uh, go from there. So... Look for that video about Wednesday or Thursday. We'll, we'll get you guys a, a pro level update, an XBA update, another video here by the weekend. So guys, keep in mind if you've been following along with the Pick'em contest in that Google Sheet, I've updated it. So by now you guys know if you won a prospect for year number five, I will be emailing you, emailing you guys within the week. And as well, let you guys know there's a new form. There's a new contest form for week number three. Obviously, today being Sunday, you guys pretty much have a week to fill this baby out and get your picks in for the next contest. That's all actually also linked in the comment section, in the live chat, and in the description as well. So that's going to be it for tonight's episode, guys, of the XBA. Leave a like if you like this thing. We will see you later on this week for XBA 2 action. Thank you for watching. As always, peace.